Welcome to Sabre Spotlight, where we cover Sohegan's weekly events and highlights from after school activities to sports and important events. I'm Emma Williams. And I'm Tate Kronstra. Let's look at this past week. Here at Sohegan, we have a special class called Wellness, directed by John Dowd, who also happens to be a founding member at Sohegan. My name is John Dowd, and I've been here as long as the school's been here. He told us about how he began at Sohegan during its founding. It was a connection. A guy named Dan Basacchio, and he was one of the original five planners of Sohegan High School. He's a good friend of mine. He invited me to come, and I did. He tells us about how his job didn't originally start out as a wellness teacher. My job before Sohegan was mostly um, working with kind of hoods in the woods. <laughs> These were rough characters who had reason to be having troubles. They, they, a lot of them had pretty hard luck. And if a school was going to hire someone with my background, which is um, outward bound, um, then they're probably going to hire him to do the kind of work I was doing. When Sohegan opened, we decided it was an opportunity to do things differently. You shouldn't have to get in trouble to have an outward bound instructor as a teacher. Over the years, he has had the opportunity to watch Sohegan change from its founding state to where it is now. I like being outdoors. I feel that it is good for my body to be moving. When I present something that's new to someone else, as long as it's new to them, it can feel like it's new to me. And so, it, it's still exciting for me. Explain to us what exactly it is that they do in his wellness class. Are a lot of basic trust building. We also um, use heights and air as something that can put us in a different state of mind. We learn a lot about communication and problem solving. And I think something that everyone goes through and that Sohegan students can look at each other, even Sohegan students who've been here at very different times, they will have gone through something similar. And when people have gone through a challenge together, that they're more likely to feel like they belong together. There are many things that he loves about teaching wellness at Sohegan. When Sohegan first opened, I think we were so excited about um, not fighting the inertia of tradition and doing things differently. Um, as time has gone by, I think we've become more willing to do something that isn't necessarily our idea, that um, if, as long as it's a good idea, we're willing to try things. Lastly, John told us what he thinks is special about Sohegan High School. While I'm an extreme version of this, I do think that staff at Sohegan High School enjoy a high level of autonomy. I believe it's a good thing because the students of Sohegan High School get to spend their days with a bunch of adults who are very invested in what they're doing because they've designed the experiences, they've decided what they're doing. Therefore, I'd like to think that the average kid that goes through Sohegan High School gets the message that whatever they choose to do when they leave Sohegan, it should be something that they're excited about, mostly because they see that modeled in the people that they spend their days with. Thanks, John. We love having you as a teacher here. We talked to Brian Miller to discuss the new technology blocks at Sohegan. Uh, I'm Brian Miller. I'm the Network and Systems Administrator here at Sahagan High School. Many of us don't agree with what the school blocks, but they do it for a good reason. Um, typically the things we block from the web are stuff that could be potentially harmful or could be found to be harmful or used for any sort of malicious intent by somebody, um, whether it's intentional or unintentional. The state sets the guidelines for it all, not the school. There are state-run standards uh, for public school systems that you have to abide by in order to make sure that content is filtered properly. Sauhegan gives out computers to um, each student as a one-to-one -one program because we're providing the means to get you into the internet. There's a, a little more of a, a stricter policy upon that as well. If you come upon a site that's blocked that you believe shouldn't be, there is a way you can get it unblocked. Teachers typically, all staff in itself, should have a lighter uh, load as far as being blocked, so staff should be able to get to um, certain social media sites and things like that that are used either in classes or things um, for the courses themselves. Teachers are blocked too, just not as much as students. Items that are kind of open source for people to kind of put in whatever they want to, where it's not specifically managed by a company, so a lot of blog type spots or, uh, you know, like the social con social media stuff is because everybody can kind of just say what they want and put what they want in there. Brian explains to us what's typically blocked. 
Anything and everything can be uh, is subject to the availability of being unblocked and managed for a student to be able to access a staff to be able to access it. Now that goes against you know whatever um, you know the state regulates as well. So as long as it it's within those guidelines and doesn't cross any of those boundaries, it's we can certainly look at it to be unblocked. Thanks for the further information, Brian. Career and College Night is next Thursday, the 16th, where post-graduation options are explained. This week, we interviewed Tim Kertrude about the Career and College Night happening next week. So we have the Career and Training Expo scheduled for Thursday, January 16th. Um, from 5.30 to 6.30, we're going to have folks from different um, training organizations, the, the community college system, the military, um, some employers, um, just a variety of folks, even some gap year programs um, on hand to talk to students about um, just opportunities that are available um, through their organizations in a kind of a fair style format so folks can kind of float around to different tables, hear from who they're interested in hearing from and, and just kind of explore options kind of outside of maybe the traditional four-year college path. I think that I've noticed the past two years students are kind of like becoming a lot more conscious of the costs of attending college and and I think kind of curious about um, a lot more curious than I've seen in the past um, about options broader than you know a four-year college path and I think we want to make sure that we're supporting students of all interests um, and um, and and helping students envision paths um, to their future and a successful future um, that fit best for them so we're, we're, we're doing what we can to um, highlight some of these different paths that that students can take that that can be good I, I, I do think so I think one of the things is students do what they know and so they've seen I mean the well-treaded pathway to going to college but on the other side of it like there's you know you drive by buildings and you don't know what's going on you know there's a business there and you're not sure what what people are doing there um, and so I think this is an opportunity to kind of peel back the curtain on some on a variety of different um, paths that students can can take whether it's military whether it's hearing more from from the community college system or you know hearing directly from some employers in our community um, about what options they have for students um, that are graduating and looking for um, you know a career or a way to get training for a career. This event is open to all grades and is a great opportunity to explore your career options. Make sure to check it out next week. We sat down with Jenna Spear, the captain of the bowling team, to discuss their season. Jenna Spears shared with us her great experiences from her time on the bowling team. Hi, I'm Jenna Spear. I'm one of the captains of the Sahuigan bowling team, and I'm on varsity. I've made a ton of friendships as well as like advanced my bowling skills. That's not really like the most important life skill, but it really taught me more about like friendships and like the team environment. It's so different from any other sports that I do because I'm on the softball team and the cheer team. And it's just such a different environment and I've made so many great friends that I usually wouldn't really be friends with from different grades and it's just been a really good experience and it's probably one of the highlights of my entire high school career. Her inspiration to join the team came from her older siblings as well as her friends. I've been on the team since freshman year. I'm a senior now, so it's my last year, sadly. But um, I joined freshman year because both my sisters did it, and we were all on the team together, the three of us, so it was really fun. And I got all my friends to join, too. Although they each compete individually, it truly is a team sport. Every year, we've improved so much. Um, and I think the program is really on the come up. Like, we're in contention to make it to playoffs this year, which we haven't been the past three years. Um, definitely it's growing, everybody's getting better. Um, we're actually competitive this year and I think we will be in the future, which is really exciting. The team has been taking tremendous strides in the right direction as their playoff hopes are in reach. Good luck guys, have a great season. And that's all for this week Sabres. We'll see you next week with some more news. <laughs>